Hello, team leaders. Kiwanis, how are you? Uh, my name is Jeff Stone, and uh, I'm here to present uh, the next uh, uh, guest speaker on mental health and wellness, Ellen Ritz. Uh, Ellen Ritz is a registered nurse. She's a health educator and president of the National Alliance of Mental Illness, Central South Long Island, New York, Huntington. Uh, and what her topic is today is well-being and self-care. Welcome to the uh, the podcast, the, the discussion, Ellen. Uh, thank you for agreeing to speak uh, to us. And by the way, Ellen is a clinician. She is also a board member for Project Help Long Island, where we get a lot of our uh, expertise from clinicians and professionals. And she's also a member of the Qantas Club of Manhasset, Fort Washington. Okay. So uh, you've got the floor, Ellen. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. So today I'm going to be talking about well being and self care. They are essential for longer lives, for better relationships, for just us all feeling better. And what are they? So self care is actually mindfulness. Mindfulness means staying in the moment. And when we stay in the moment, we don't do, we don't think about should have, could have, what do I need to do? Because our brains are all really uh, busy all the time and our brains need to be resting. And the reason is it's connected to our immune system. Our immune system protects us from getting sick or ill most of the time. And when we end up being under stress, and stress is when we're always thinking, should have, could have, what do I need to do? Um, the immune system gets weaker. When we take some time, hopefully each day, um, to really stay in the moment. And that means that whatever that is for you, many people think that mindfulness is yoga, is meditation, which it is. And it, those are very healthy for us. But also for many people who may, may or may not like yoga or meditation, you may just taking a walk, looking at the fall leaves, the different colors or the flowers or petting a dog, whatever that is again. And that's very personal because what you, relaxes you, what keeps you in the moment may be different for other people. So what happens? We think, oh my God, I can't take this time. I feel guilty. How can I take time for myself? I'm either caring for someone or I'm so busy. There's always things that are going on and need to be tend attended to. I think most people can realize that. I certainly have that kind of a busy life and a busy day. And so even just riding uh, my stationary bicycle might be actually, it's, it's exercise as well as staying in the moment. So what happens is, is that you shouldn't feel guilty because it's actually essential for a, again, a better life, calmer, better relationships. Because when you're tense and you're dealing with a tense situation, what happens is when you go into that situation, if you're tense to begin with, it will blow up bigger. And if you take that moment to be a little calmer, being centered, um, taking some deep breaths, and we're going to talk about some of the things you can do, some coping mechanisms, and but taking some deep breaths thinking about what you're gonna say, you won't blow up as much or maybe not at all. If you have some self-awareness, uh, you may say, okay, I'm really upset. I am not gonna deal with this situation now. I'm gonna take myself away until I can have uh, to speak with or to deal with whatever the difficult situation may be. And that's what we want. We want the best outcomes to things that we do. So some of the things that we're gonna, I'm gonna, talk about also and show you is some coping. Uh, the first thing I can actually is the breathing. I know this is very common. You can take it wherever you go. And it actually is a reflex that actually calms you down. And what uh, it can be, you breathe in four, you hold four, four counts. You don't count out loud because you're breathing, right? So you hold, take in four, one, two, three, four, hold four, one, two, three, four. You let out four, one, two, three, four, and then you hold again four before you take the next breath in. It's not that fast. Certainly it's much slower. So one of the ways that this is successful is you're thinking about the counting, right? You're not thinking about anything else, but counting the one, two, three, four. You're thinking about your breathing, hopefully breathing from your stomach, not from your shoulders, when you, you know, your chest. Um, and that's really the best. It also, again, 
is a reflex that actually calms you down. Uh, other things that I want to show a um, something that if people want, I can give it to you. Let me see if I can find it. It's our coping. It's an easy sheet that says, um, uh, and I love this because it's, I like something that's easy to read, easy to understand. When you feel overwhelmed, take a deep breath and think about one thing at a time. It's the same thing as goals. If we have too many goals and they're too long, they will not be as successful. If we do one thing, think about one thing. When you're sad, write down how I'm feeling or talk to a friend or it says grown up because these are really good for teenagers and younger about what is making me say it, but it's good for everybody, by the way. When you're angry, I love this. Take a step back and think about how I can have a calm conversation about why I'm angry. Because when we are emotional, people don't hear the content of our conversations. Very important. You, What is communication about? Hearing somebody else's what they're saying and also getting what we want said, heard right? We want the person to hear us. And they get distracted with emotion. The calmer you are, the stronger you are. The more emotional you are, it's distracting and not as impactful. And all of these others, frustrated. I love this one. Restless. Take a walk around my neighborhood and turn on some music and dance. Anything like that, right? I sort of think that's really good. But also, restless was restless. Restless is also has to do with anxiety. When you're anxious, think about how you are, right? You can't sit still, you can't focus. Anxiety affects the frontal lobe, which turns down your ability to focus. And so getting rid of and, and actually getting rid of some of that energy and focusing away from what you're anxious helps center you. And I think this is a great list. I think it's uh, easy to understand. I'm gonna give you a couple of other things to do. Hold on, let me see if I can get that up. Here we go. Halt. And this has a lot to do with the list, it's more expansive. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard about angry, hungry, angry, right? And this is halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Insight into how you are feeling, understanding that you are really, you know, when I am very tired or stressed for a while, I'm far more sensitive to what people say. And I don't hear them in the way when, that when I'm calmer and more relaxed. So if you understand, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I've had stress for a day or two or three, I'm not going to deal with something that may be very difficult or maybe something that's not so difficult, but I'm going to wait until I calm down, I eat, maybe get some sleep, whatever that is for you. Nobody is a victim. We do have choices. And the insight into how we're feeling will help us, again, have better lives, have, have more productive relationships. And the other one, which is I love, is 54321. Um, and you can read this. It's when you're overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. You can feel like there's an emergency, even if there isn't, right? That's sort of our anxiety, our stress levels. It's exactly how we feel. So I know that I cannot <laughs> to remember the 54321. I'm a practical person and I like to be able to take some of these with me in my mind, not, you know, I don't have to have a piece of paper, which you can have as well, but five things I see around, around me, four things I hear, three things I can touch, two things I will change this because one I can smell and one I can taste. I can't really smell or taste two things at once. And the very last thing, which I really like, is one thing I am grateful for. If you begin or end each day, well, especially when things are tough, but even when they're not, to think about one thing you're grateful for. Sometimes when I have the toughest times and I feel like I don't have anything, I walk outside and I look at the blue sky, hopefully it's a blue sky, or I just look and I take a deep breath and I say, thank God I can breathe, I can see, you know, whatever I have, you know, Whatever that strength is, I have the strength to be able to put one foot in front of the others. So looking at what you have, not what you don't have. And that's sometimes really hard when we're under a lot of stress and things don't seem to be going well. And that's a really important thing, this gratefulness. And that also, all of these things change your brain to the good chemicals. Really important. Again, 
being grateful and doing many of these mindful things, and that's grateful is just wonderful, um, really changes to be good chemicals in your brain. And, and therefore, again, strengthens your immune system and gives you a better feeling of well being that you can tackle things. So, all of these things I do want to talk about. Sometimes you're in waiting for a doctor's office visit or a principal, who knows, things that may be very nerve wracking. What I do is I can think about maybe feeling my, my pants or whatever I'm wearing and thinking about the material feel or looking at the pictures on the wall, thinking about that. It really takes your, your brain and calms it down because you're really looking at something that's objective. And you can, you know, and, and again, take your mind off of should have, could have, and what do I need to do? So I, I'm going to move forward into another area, which is the same, similar, is well being. So many of us get very upset and take things very personally. And as a nurse in schools, what I do is I do talk to students once in a while when they have a cold pack and I know them. And I always say one thing that will make your life more peaceful, many things, right? But one thing also is that very little in this world is personal. If you really think about it, when somebody's reacting, even if they're, they're sort of critical of you, Many, many times it's really about them maybe being jealous, maybe being insecure, maybe being upset, who knows? But it's frequently not about you. If you can feel, I mean, I'm not saying anybody shouldn't feel, but when you get upset with something and, but take a step back, think about, was that about me or was that really somebody else feeling really awful about something? A simple example I use is when you check out at a grocery or any of the stores, um, you have a cashier who is a little bit nasty or upset. Um, can't be about you, right? You don't even know them. And so many of us say, huh, they have some nerve. What I think is maybe they're having financial troubles. Maybe someone is very ill with cancer or something else. Maybe they're going through relationship problems and divorce. So try not to take things so personally. So I got to show you my other thing that my daughter gave me, my doggy picture, which many of you may have seen and maybe not. So I love this. It's a cute reminder to help you when you're about to judge how someone is reacting to some something you think is no big deal. How deep is the mud? Depends on who you ask. We all go through the same stuff differently. Look at the two dogs, tall dog with mud on the bottom of his feet, a short dog with mud all over his body, right? They don't, one doesn't think, nah, not much mud. And the other one thinks, oh my God, I'm all, all full of mud, right? And that's really something, you know, we all see things and there's no, any of the, we see things like, and just because, and that's actually probably everybody in the family, you put them in a room and something happens, they'll all come out and tell you a different story. And it is such an important concept because, um, Judgment and criticism does not belong in this world. If we could throw that out, it would be a wonderful and look for the best in each other. That would be wonderful. So um, I'm going to end soon. Um, but I hope you take some of these things with you and think about them. Because awareness is the first step into change and to deciding if you want to change. And um, we can always get you these, these forms out with the coping and with the halt. Um, my doggy picture, I'm not so sure. My daughter gave me that and she loves that. So I love that too. So, so thank you. Thank you. Um, I could talk forever, but I know I have a limited time. So well, glad to thank be you, here. Thank you, Alan, very much for your discussion on well-being and self-care. And I agree. <clears throat> words are very powerful. They can either help or they can hurt. So again, choose your words wisely, carefully. Uh, and we're all in different situations at different times. Uh, and I'm Jeff Stone. I'm also a member of the Kiwanis Club of Manhattan, Port Washington. I'm also president of the mental health nonprofit organization, Project Help Long Island, where we also discuss uh, co-occurring substance disorders. And we act as referrals to others. Uh, well, team leaders, bring this to your club. Send the link to your clubs. I'll send the recording out. And you could also send it to the divisions. And hopefully you can start something with the communities where you live and we'll send out potential projects that you can do. And uh, 
we hope to see you, by the way, uh, Ellen, uh, myself, and uh, Dr. Kathy Levinson. We're all Kiwanians, and we'll be at DECON this year. We look forward to speaking at the Mental Health Forum Saturday at 11 o'clock. All right. Uh, we will have future uh, discussions from other clinicians. Uh, and uh, so we hope to do this on a weekly basis. We'll try. Uh, but there you have it, folks. Okay. Thank you very much, Alan. And uh, see you all, team leaders. Take care. Bye now.